The Regional Cancer Center is survivorship. No one should have to go without cancer care if they live in this area, and no one should have to do it alone. A big part of getting well is having people to go through the journey with you. One of the biggest things that I see here at the Regional Cancer Center is that there is tremendous collaboration or cooperation among all the physicians and that we all essentially work together towards one goal and that's the particular patient. It's quite shocking when you find out and you're diagnosed with cancer. Your life becomes your main priority to save it. And once I entered that cancer center and was able to come in there, um, really the staff is what, what struck me uh, in a positive way immediately. The majority of everybody I met there was just warm and receiving. Many, many people in our community and across the country are being diagnosed with cancer. The difference comes in what happens after they get diagnosed with cancer. The Regional Cancer Center, with all of its pieces, it's not a place, it's a program, it's, it's pieces of physicians and hospitals, and plans of care and protocols and research trials, all these things come together for that sole purpose to be patient-centered around getting better and living better. The medical community here is, is fascinating uh, and we have some great experts in fields of oncology care, you know, surgeons, you know, um, radiation oncologists, um, medical oncologists where We've realized that really cancer care to excel has to involve all specialties and coordinate the care. We have the you know, facilities, we have the doctors, we have the support staff, that it can be done. Treatment and outcomes can be very effective here at home. When I was diagnosed, I was living in Maryland and all my doctors were in Maryland. When you live in the metropolitan area, you're just minutes away from everything. But when you go and then you have to be sent here, then sent there, then sent there. That's not your backyard. Here, everything is my backyard. Any treatment that they get any place else, they can get here. They don't have the travel time trying to get to north, um, and any problems that arise, they come here, you know, as opposed to waiting to see somebody um, north, south, or even, you know, in Charlottesville. We do the same things that they do elsewhere. There's a, a cost in terms of traveling far away, taking time off from work. There's a cost in terms of the exhaustion from the patient's perspective as well. Uh, so the more we can do here locally in Fredericksburg, the better the patient and their family will be and they'll, they'll hopefully live a better life and take advantage of that time. And that's so important. There's a two-pronged benefit to this. Number one, it doesn't create as much burden in their life if they can stay close by. And number two, they're more likely to get well because we really believe in a holistic approach to getting well, which involves staying close to your family, staying close to your support groups, not having all of these other anxieties to worry about while you're trying to fight that battle against cancer. We work to raise the clinical profile of our cancer programs. What that means is the newest technologies, the newest equipment that can provide a better chance of someone getting through this cancer experience. Stereotactic radiosurgery is probably the first example that comes to mind. We call it surgery. Now it's not surgery because we don't use a scalpel. The idea is to use radiation tightly focused in place of a knife so that you don't have to open the skull or open the chest but we get a surgical result, which is dead tumor, but using radiation, so they link the two words, radiosurgery. The nice thing about the radiosurgery is it's outpatient. You walk in and you walk out. And you walk in for either one day or five days and you walk out each day, you go home. Our exact arrangement with the TrueBeam STX that we have with the robotic couch and all these other technical bells and whistles, if you will, was the first or second one operational in America. We're still the only one of two in the state of Virginia. We have a multidisciplinary approach when it comes to treating breast cancer um, patients. There's a couple of treatment options when it comes to radiation oncology. The uh, standard of care after lumpectomy has been whole breast radiation. That's typically six weeks, five days a week. 
As part of that, uh, the radiation um, oncologist has started to do something called the AccuBoost program. And the AccuBoost is a very specific way of actually providing the focused radiation as part of the AccuBoost. I put a number of clips in the lumpectomy cavity so that whenever radiation oncology, they see where the clips are, they see where the lumpectomy cavity is, and the AccuBoost just basically targets it from uh, four different directions to say this is where the focal treatment is. I've got the best job probably in town. I could never have done this, I don't think, without Mary Washington. Uh, they made the commitment early on, a very sizable economic commitment, to build this cancer center and to put in the latest equipment for the radiation and to go with the program of radiosurgery. They gave us the doctors, the means, and the go-to, and we got on with it, and it's been a great success. We provide chemotherapy and all kinds of infusions that patients may need on an outpatient basis. Each patient has their own infusion chair, a TV, snacks, refreshments. They have a very calming atmosphere. Then they get one-on-one -on -one care from our nursing staff, and they get all these complimentary therapies. If we can't take good care of our patients, then we're not doing our best job. The cancer experience is improved through programs like complementary therapies, for example. Something as simple as providing music therapy during an infusion session can help that patient get well. It's not something we charge for um, when they come here and get the Reiki therapy or the healing touch therapy or the music therapy. It's just something they get if they want it. Or patients can come here and just relax and receive their medical therapy, go to sleep, read a book, watch TV. It's all up to them. I just want patients to know that we're here for them and what's important to them is important to us. And we want them to realize that when they come here, it's all about them. Our cancer center is a collection of private practices, hospitals, nurses, navigators, people in town who provide their level of expert care. Another really good example of collaboration is how our physicians work together in cancer conference. This is sometimes called tumor board. Once a week, a whole group of us get together. That includes the radiologist who goes over all the films, the pathologist who actually goes over the pathology report, the uh, medical oncologists are all there, the radiation oncologists are all there, and the surgeons are all there, uh, as well as a number of other people. They're talking about the future plan of care for a patient, not just academically reviewing what happened to a patient. They're talking today about what we're going to do for that patient over the next days and weeks. One of the things that we try to do is really discuss almost every case at a board meeting, and that's because other doctors, other providers, may actually have just great options and thoughts maybe that you didn't think about, and how do you put all that together and give that patient and family the best care? A patient, you know, if you'll feels like, yes, they're being taken seriously, yes, that it's not going to be just my opinion on something, it's going to be everybody's opinion. And a lot of patients like that, that they're being discussed on like a, a multidisciplinary level, and that's basically what we do. It all comes back to the patient. And in order to be patient-centered in what we do, we have to be able to coordinate and integrate the care that our patients receive. Our Navigator program is especially good at identifying the needs of patients from the time of diagnosis all the way through their plan of care and helping them every step of the way. When you hear the word cancer associated with you, sometimes that's all you hear. We're there to make sure that the information gets through to the patient when they're able to accept that information. We can help with scheduling appointments. We can assist with making sure that uh, all, of the, all of the things that the physician has ordered are in place for the patient. We have so much technology in cancer care uh, that it can be very frightening 
And if I can explain to a patient what's going to happen to them and relieve some of the unknown, then the fear will subside to some extent. Anytime that I've made a difference in the journey, it, it's very rewarding. What's important is that for patients and their families to feel that someone's there to help guide them through this, what could be a very dark tunnel, and that they have someone to help be their guide and give them options and help them get them through this process. It's exhilarating to think, you know, we're actually doing this for somebody. We're making something right that had gone wrong and we're doing it with the minimum of problem for that patient. I've worked with some wonderful people. These are cancer patients for the most part. They've faced something that a lot of us pray we never do, and they're very courageous. They come through it, and it, it gives me a great feeling to be part of that. We have an excellent program here. We're, we're all very passionate about treating cancer patients, and I think we have to do it on a personal and uh, empathetic level. We're successful uh, in terms of most patients in that we're able to treat them appropriately, we're able to follow them, and provide whatever care that they need. Innovation, um, the best of the best. They have the latest technology. They stand for striving to be the best. They truly, truly do care. I don't know where I'm going to end up. At least I've got a chance and I've been blessed enough to have that staff of people that was handy and right here for me. I don't often pass a day without coming across someone in the community, work, church, grocery store, whatever, who hasn't had some experience with cancer and had some experience with the Regional Cancer Center. So here again are people who are facing the most difficult and challenging time of their lives personally. And they're talking about how good things were and how many people helped them. And there's nothing better than that.